may be out of line for saying this, but you look exhausted. I don't be like for you, I don't do okay, I don't do all right. I don't do no mad events. What lie they pray for me? For a long time, this show has been on my side to watch. I was waiting patiently for it to come out. Only because the buzz was crazy. And now that it's out, I am here to give you guys the review that you always wanted. So before the montage, grab yourself a popcorn, go and pee. It's gonna be a bumpy bar. <laughs> Episode 1 was titled, It's a Bloody Affair. This was the episode that introduced us, the viewers, to the characters, but they were introduced in a very weird way. We first start off with two ladies bearing what is known as a body, a dead body, in case you missed that. So you fine. You see? You see? This girl, you're not serious, I swear. The girls are named Sarah and Kemi. Judging from the title of the film, you would think they are actual sisters, but no, they're just best friends. Sarah is getting married to Kola and um, Kemi is dating this guy. <laughs> but you might be wondering who is Kola? Kola is like this rich man's son that runs this pharmaceutical company named Adimola Pharmaceutical. I'm so glad I was able to pronounce that thing at once. At, see, I, I messed up. <laughs> but I, I'm glad I, I said it at one go, guys. He's a rich man and the series wastes no time in telling us how rich he is. He uses helicopter to navigate Lagos traffic and wears a suit. Does that not shout, I am a rich man's son? <laughs> His family is weird. Let me explain. He has a sister that is portrayed as a drug addict. My daughter, Jemaine, who is studying overseas. Mom, everybody knows I'm in rehab. It's the biggest news in Lagos. <laughs> he kisses his mom on the lips. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, hey, I don't know why, man. That's weird. And his brother Femi is also weird. He hates Kola so much that the first time we meet him is at this rundown place in Lagos. You see a woman cooking up a storm. And he's yet to hire an assassin to kill his brother. So their family is messed up and if that's not all, Kola is an upcoming boxer. The show is actually a boxing show. Throughout the first episode, we see him practice his moves on his wife-to-be. Kemi, who is her best friend, confronts her and tells her not to go through with the wedding since Baba won't use her body train for Mayweather. And she agrees. She goes to tell her mom. And I was amazed when her mom said this. He beats me. Game came in. He beats me. You're willing to let go of everything. Maka one slap. She's right. The right time to leave is when he bundles you and puts you in a coffin. On the wedding day, this is where everything goes south. And when I say south, I mean south. The dancers are from the south. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Help me out, guys. But Kola almost kissed his ex in this wedding venue. And I wasn't surprised that he dodged it at the very last second because he only kisses two people. Sarah and his mom. We see the assassin prepare for murder, honestly. He has a dagger. He definitely will not use it. He brought an axe. He also will not use this. He brought a gun. Guys, <laughs> I said he's not gonna use any of them. The assassin trails Kola and I think Kola liked the chase for some reason. They went through this door that housed the chefs, climbed some stairs, went through a hallway, hit this lady with a tray. What did the tray ever do to you guys, man? Kola used the elevator and the assassin used the elevator also. Psych! Kola never used it. <laughs> yeah, boy. They met and they fought each other man to man. Listen to the call! Please, please, I beg you. And you would think the assassin would be trained to beat a common man. Like, what the hell? We just saw him pack tools for mass destruction. But I don't blame him, honestly. He lost this battle. Because if you have beaten babes the same amount of time Kola has, you would have the energy to, to beat an elephant. So the assassin stood no chance here. 
a failure. You are a failure. You can never make it. After winning that battle, more bad news would come. Sarah tells Kola that this beating has to end, that she can't marry him. And all my guy could see was a punching bag. Sarah, listen to me. You will not do this. You hear me? You will not embarrass me. Embarrass my family. He hits her and strangles her so hard that this happened. I'm going to kill the both of you. So Sarah and Kemi both cleaned the blood, hid the body and pretended like they did not know what happened. The mom found out that her son wasn't in the building and started acting like she knew he wouldn't go through with the wedding. And in the night, they cut off his head, packed his body, put him in the boot of their car and buried him. The end. It was fun watching this. This one episode was the best. Okay, I'm lying. It doesn't end. The episode ended with the photographer um, seeing them and taking some really scandalous pictures. Episode 2 was named Run Sisters Run. It continues from where we stopped. They killed him and buried him. Then we see them do the usual bath after someone just committed murder. Since it starts falling apart for Sarah, she gets kicked out of Adimola's home and Uduak here, which is Kola's mom, is so happy to do so. Only if she knows that her son is gone. Kemi gets approached by the photographer who was at the parking lot that night. Nice car. And then this one I took at the loading bay of the hotel later that night. Tiger! Ah! I go let Tiger Squad catch you. What do you want? Money. Lots of it. Wait a minute. Is, is that the origin bitters? And did that man just buy NYC shirts? <laughs> They withdrew tons of money and gave it to him and Baba asked for more and the girls were shocked and I was like guys don't you know this is how blackmail works? Kemi then said, you know what, there's space where we buried Kola, let's add an app body there. And Sarah being the mumu as she always is, agrees. They go looking for a man in Allen Avenue who will help them give them this gun and Allen Avenue is like a social hub for prostitutes, it's like to go at this point. Let's when I want job back for me or for one of my girls. More than clear road, my for see my customers, now they spoil market for me. My sister, I never reach like that now. I fuck there your ear. Come back for you before I change up for you. I'll be here, I'll be like for your eyes. Ah, shawa! Ah, shawa! The irony um, that she's calling them, uh, you know what, let me just shut up. Kemi then meets her ex who is this bootleg drug dealer and clown on the side. He has to have multiple streams of income. Look who the cat dragged in. <laughs> but after some shakara, he eventually gives her a gun. She tried to shoot him and he was smart. You see, the photographer is not the man that takes pictures. He's also. Sarah then hit him. I think he died. Um, body too. They just keep stacking the bodies, man. As this was happening, Femi and his wife exhausted the Netflix permission and pass and do the nasty anywhere possible. But his life isn't always this pleasurable. Timmy Lane, I'm shocked I pronounced her name well. Timmy. But Timmy wants to rule the company in the meantime until Kola gets back. But Kola is dead and she's a druggie. No one is giving her anything. So to keep Timmy on lockdown, Femi's wife, which is Yinka, showed her an array of the best tools for happiness. There's cocaine. There's horror heroin. <laughs> See, that's what they call it. There's promethazine. There's aspirin. You know, at this point, I'm just trying to rhyme. Guys, I'm a rapper. <laughs> she leaves temptation and goes back to her mom only to hear this. Just give me a chance. You've never given me a proper chance. I can't do it. Hmm. You want to know why you have never been given a proper chance? Because you're useless, that's why. You're a useless, dirty drug addict who has been a disappointment to me from the day you were born. To be honest, I saw this coming. <laughs> I would take some if my mom told me that. We have Joe, who is this detective on the brick from Chicago. He has this nose that smells foul, legit chicken foul. I suspect foul play. Based on what? Is this nose ever on? Once I smell a rat, it's impossible to unsmell it. But yes, he's needed in this story because he legit follows the wrong trail 
all season long a week go by and everyone is scared is color missing what's going on with my grown man where's the helicopter and bam some dogs find the body and the helicopter was buried beside him <laughs> but they find his body and the girl's lives are about to change let me explain the following events well. So Joe, the detective, is on a winning streak. He gets some info about Kenny who was at the wedding because he wanted to get Sarah back. Kenny and Sarah they're, um, used to date. Um, he's broke so you understand why she's not with him. They arrested Kenny because of this and to be honest, this shouldn't be a problem but Sarah already told him everything. And then we see I told him. I have to tell someone, Kenny. I was losing my mind. You don't go better for your mama and your papa, you ain't mad me. Okay, Kenny doesn't spill and I appreciate that, so let's clap for the poor man. Give me a second. Thank you very much. <laughs> but this victory will be short-lived because the CCTV footage from the parking lot came out. The two ladies ran away from the apartment and the police at this point have done their very best, so they needed to rest. Yes, you can see them resting here. <laughs> They've done enough. But now we have what I would like to call a catch me if you can moment. Eh? You remember that movie? Eh? The highlight of this episode was this for me. Do you believe me if I said I miss Nigeria? Episode 3 was titled The Hunt. Sarah and Kemi are now on the run as the police hunt them. I'm using hunt again. And they find themselves in this place called Makoko. I know this because there are more drone shots made in Makoko than any place in Lagos. It's like a hotspot for drone takers. I am serious. Go on YouTube, search Makoko drone and be amazed. Sarah is unhappy in this episode, is she not always? But her dad gets this timely heart attack that only attacks poor people in Hollywood. Like he's broke, what else is he living for honestly? Back to Makoko. They are here only because Kenny puts them there. And normally they should be able to live here without any worries, but they have a silent killer on their trail named Uncle B. And that guy looks like he lives for the chase. I haven't spoken about Uncle B so far, so let me explain to you this scary character. Is this bodyguard? For Udwak that his looks is given but his vibe isn't <laughs> an instagram model just laughed at that joke i've made it in life guys he reminds me of that guy in that movie that rescued that asian lady and put her on his shoulder and they later on fall in love what is the name again eh? Trans oh yeah transporter that is the name i knew the name from the beginning i was just trying to pretend like i was, I was it's called leading on you've been led on it's it's a joke guys he finds them and starts like beating them up but sarah and kemi are used to this sammy sammy what are you doing man if you can kill color who is uncle b they knocked him out and set the house on fire. This chick right here, she wants to kill more people. As you did, so we don't get money. But I beg, we take out, beg you. We, we got to finish money now, beg. We don't need to pay with money now. We pay with another thing. Yeah, <laughs> boy. They decided to go to Kemi's grandma's place after Kenny threw away their fake passports to invade the police. Then they stole this car from this pimp. Honestly, I don't know if he is. The Afro is giving pimp. Second time I'm using the joke given. Is this still funny? You remember what you do when my popsy and momsy die? Snuck us into Auntie Felicia's house and watch Karasika on next. <laughs> oh guys, I have a review of that movie on my channel. Go and check it out. I really like it, guys. The car they stole broke down because if you think I would buy this car and still be able to afford fuel, you are dead wrong! They get a lift from these people who seemed like couples, but they are not. It takes the girls to this beach house. Maybe out of line for saying this, but you look exhausted. I don't feel like for you, I don't do okay, I don't do all right. I don't do no mad events. What lie they pray for me? The episode ended with some naked battles that I can't show on YouTube because uh, uh, YouTube will choke my channel. <laughs> Listen to me. You will not do this. You hear me? You will not embarrass me. Embarrass my family. You will not. But one thing you guys can't do to me is lie. That baby is not naked. I saw it. I saw it. It's my job, man. The funniest scene in this episode was this. I'm waiting ages for this. You are too serious with this case. Remember the elephant, oh? slow and steady. 
unless you are getting paid. Guys, if you've reached this part of the review, I know you are here to stay. So why don't you just subscribe, man, and like the video, and also comment what is your favorite song, no, movie of all time. What's your favorite movie of all time? I'm going to say my favorite movie later on in the review, so uh, keep watching. All right, back to the review. Is that clear? Go, go! <laughs> Episode 4 was titled The Catch, foreshadowing what will eventually happen. Sticking to the theme of the show, the girls make another bad decision as the man that picked them up is not as holy as he looked. He's a kidney harvester. He also wanted to take this babe's own. And again guys, sticking to the team, no man can stand a chance with any of these babes in a fight. They knocked him out or they killed him, but not after he killed Kenny. Man, based on that, I told you. you. Should have just walked away. The guy needed to die. So I think that was the only way to stop him from helping Sarah. So good readings. But R.I.P. to be honest, but good readings. After they escaped, Kemi had to lie to Sarah saying Kenny gave them the car and he is still alive. But we all know Baba was slashed in the neck. He's gone. He's, he's gone, guys. She later on confessed after some questionable buhaha. Is she dying? Oh, 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 she's dead, guys. She's dead. Why, why did she save them? Why is she rubbing on her leg? He, he was trying to save us and Dr. Deboye killed him. Okay, they finally make it to Kemi's village, but the joy will be short-lived because Transporter caught them as they were downing Fufu. <laughs> he took them to this hideout that was straight out of like King of Boys. Yeah, I had to make that joke to frustrate some people I'm joking, guys. And this is huge because the family had waited for this all season long. So you know they would celebrate well. Udwak wore the best gown she had, even told Timlay to wear her own nice clothes. I'm not even lying. Uncle B has found the girls. Let's go then. I grab my bag, meet me in the car, and wear something nicer for your brother. I like how Timia looks like she came out of like those old karate movie with that jacket. Oh, oh no, back to the future, back from the future. Oh, you must be wondering, how did Timia escape rehab? Uh, I also can't show this on YouTube, guys. I have to blow it, but you know what happened. But before they got killed, they stood up to give a final speech. He used to beat me, and I wasn't the only one. He would hit me every time I didn't do as he asked and tell me that it was my fault. Shut up! And I believed it. As they were doing that, the gun went through adoption. It passed from him to him to him to her. And she shot Uncle B. Why did she do that? I seriously don't even know. I don't blame her because that Uncle B looks like he has like an eye gun in his butt crack. So don't be surprised if he pulled that one out. She then exposed Uduak for cheating on her father and carrying another man's child who is Kola and adding him into the Ademola family and now making him head of everything while Femi and his wife are uh, strapping somewhere. She killed the pawn family, which is Kemi Ayinka, and it ends with her saying, It's done. <laughs> So let's talk about what I liked and what I did not like. I love how self-aware it was. The characters felt awkward, except for this Chicago guy, mostly because I don't have an accent. <laughs> there were moments that felt so spontaneous that I loved, like the policemen not having fun. I really loved that. This was at the peak of the show where everything should be serious, but this happened. It's comedic, but it's true because our policemen know they ever get well, how is it possible that a police vehicle has no fuel? <laughs> Welcome to Nigeria. There were a handful of A-list actors put in this show, but most of them served their purpose and bounced before we could see them. It was like a palate cleanser. Oh, you're getting bored? Bam! That, that's a shirt from um, uh, boarding school prep. Uh, uh, 
That's like dining table clothes. That's like an A-list actor at this point. So the dark side of color was a good addition. Seeing the girls he destroyed over the years and also painted them made me hate him more. So I loved that. Few things I did not like. Blade was a dunce. I actually liked that it was a dunce, but it was a waste of money. I would have just poisoned his drink of food, not hire a toothpick that squeezes his face anyhow. I did not like the joke at the beginning when they killed him. It's it's like wanted to remove me from like the immersion of watching the show, but they saved it by being more serious. You start from the head. God, no, what's that? Ah, uh, don't you watch those beheading videos? You start from the head, there are less bones there. Actually, I've never watched a beheading video. The ending was good, making way for a second part, but it felt rushed only because like you just killed everybody and like, it's oh, done. it's done. Like, what? <laughs> but yeah, those are the things I did not like, but it was a journey that I enjoyed. The two main characters going on a run for their lives reminded me of my favorite movie of all time, Slumdog Millionaire. Even the man trying to take their kidneys was probably inspired by the other man that tried to make him blind. I loved it. Kemi and Sarah are so good together. Where Kemi felt like she knew everything in the eyes of Sarah, we the viewers knew that she was also as scared as Sarah but had to put up a front just so Sarah doesn't lose it. And this is needed when you call them sisters. One person has to be in charge or no one will. And I love that so much. DME killed it. I had to even add it. I don't like talking about actors so much because I believe everybody's trying, but DME killed it. And we all in Nigeria should respect this man's attention to craft. So what do you want in the next season? To be honest, turn it to a law film. The, I am being serious. The lawyer is going to lose because those girls have more bodies than, than those girls in Allen. <laughs> I'm a comedian. And yeah, I would leave it to this funny scene by Sheila. You are too serious with this case. Remember the elephant, slow and steady, unless you are getting paid.